very good morning to all of you. On behalf of Rural Development Department, I welcome the Sankar Forum, Samridhi Social Enterprise Recognition Forum to Bihar, and three partner organizations who have put this initiative together, namely Intellicap, Department of International Development, that is DFID, UK, and GIZ of Germany. I also welcome the social enterprises who have enthusiastically applied for the Sankal Forum Samriddhi recognition and are here as panelists and participants. My previous speaker, Mr. Richard, has already set the tone for today's uh, agenda uh, summit uh, and the previous uh, uh, short clip also has clarified what a social enterprise is. If we uh, search other sources and the readily available source that is the internet, the next best place that you can find a definition for social enterprise is the Wikipedia. I know it's not the best place to quote, but uh, for starters, uh, I think that can be the best place. A social enterprise according to them is an organization that applies commercial strategies to maximize improvements in human and environmental well-being, rather than maximizing profits for external shareholders. Social enterprises can be structured as for-profit or non-profit. That is what is more important for me. It can be either for-profit or non-profit, mostly non-profit. If profit is a motive, it is uh, generally secondary to the other concern. As I said, I understand this is not a comprehensive definition, but as a practitioner of development, mostly in the rural sector, what makes sense to me is that we are addressing the same problem through different approaches. Today, some of the best interest sectors have assembled here to discuss strategies to define scope for partnership between state and social enterprises and many more agendas, obviously. Where the state will, uh, according to me, seek the le to leverage the capacity and innovations of part leaders in this field, while the social enterprises will benefit with the scales at which they can impact and they partner with the government side. Our goals are same and the key word according to me is social responsibility, what we in Bihar call development with social justice. The role of social enterprises is critical for a better tomorrow and who would know better than us in the rural development department. As we are all aware that there has been a pattern set in economic policy with the initiation of economic reforms in the country in the early 90s. The earlier focus on planned economic development, primacy of the planned public sector, location of public sector undertakings to address regional imbalances and regulation of industries and trade through a system of licensing and permits gave way to a market-oriented economy, economic policies. The focus has shifted from public investment to promoting private investment. Obviously, we, have, we are going a step further. This shift in economic policy has been a major contributory factor in putting the Indian economy on a high growth trajectory. States, as is obvious, are required to put in place the necessary enabling conditions such as the provisions of adequate infrastructure to attract private investments. The states which have taken proactive policies measures and have better infrastructure facilities have been able to attract private investment. The poorer states with lower resource base and lack of infrastructure have been unable to attract private investment and have lacked behind, which to quite an extent is also the case with Bihar. This has resulted in increasing inequalities in economic growth, thus accentuating imbalances across states. This is something that I am quoting from the Punchi Commission of uh, Central State Relations. What I am not exactly quoting, what I have said is somewhere taken from there. To realize full benefits of public or private investments, it is important that states have a good governance. Bihar, which lags behind due to poor infrastructure base, has under good governance in achieving higher growth rate. We have been topping the charts recently. The ecosystem is conducive for private investment. But the underdevelopment is so gross that mere efforts of the state government is not enough. We have the second highest <coughs> percentage of poor population of the country next to UP. The highest number of families which need proper rural housing. We have poor industrial base, poor rural banking infrastructure. This list can go on, as was rightly pointed out by 
Mr. Chair. Human resources inputs are required. Uh, just for trade requirement, uh, the stats, if I can quote from Mr. Chair, is around 2 trillion in these states. So, Bihar obviously will again top the chart here. Approaching these issues in silos by state and social sectors definitely won't help in improving the situation. Bihar is a state with strong culture and historical heritage has been bestowed with ample natural resources and intellectual abilities, yet finds itself a part of the chronically underdeveloped regions in India. We need ways to chart routes together. Broadly, we can work in following domains. Harvested the they, it can be exhausted list. Rural development by partnering in implementation of schemes of employment guarantee, rural housing, livelihood, rural infrastructure development, etc. Strengthening social protection schemes, natural resource management, financial system development, sustainable urban and industrial development, agricultural development and development of agro-based industries, renewable energy sources, development, rural health, etc. All are equally important. Instead of deliberating on all sectors, I would like to deliberate on the sector which I understand best and that is the rural development. We implement three flags of schemes of Government of India. They are Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, which is Narega, the Indra Avas Yojana, which is a scheme for rural housing, and the National Rural Livelihood Mission. It was previously Sampun Brahmin Sarojgar Yojana, but now it has changed into a mission, which is the NRL structure or National Rural Livelihood Mission. If you take the case of Narega, social enterprises can participate in awareness campaigns, capacity building of the uh, stakeholders. They can facilitate planning based on national resource management, help in developing models of implementation approaches where Narex converges with schemes of livelihood, health, insurance, sanitation, and more and more to provide family and community based solutions. They may help in providing alternate sources of access to rights guaranteed under the Act of Narega through kiosks, CSE facilities alternate means of uh, financial inclusions like uh, business correspondent models or alternate means of money transfer of wages and to now we have facilities of uh, payment through uh, mobile systems and all those things. Bihar prison spends an average of 2000 crore rupees annually in these schemes which according to us is not even one tenth of what we can spend in Bihar, what actually is required to spend as far as the need is for the uh, rural workers, uh, the people who are actually moving out from here due to lack of uh, availability of work. We are stuck in a vicious circle of low resource, low manpower deployment, low performance leading to low resources again, which is why the reason we are not unable to break this vicious cycle. Inputs from the social sectors can definitely change the dynamics, is what we believe. In Indra Abbas Yojana, which is a rural housing scheme, though we have made, uh, the state government has made concerted effort to plug the leakages of the scheme, which were much more rampant uh, previously, still what is more important is that we are also able to complete the houses which are meant to be built for the beneficiaries. These houses are to be built by the beneficiaries. And the beneficiaries are given around 45,000 rupees to 48,500 rupees to construct the houses. So what we need here are low housing cost solutions. We uh, these uh, just to add to the figures, uh, though these are amount which are hardly sufficient for the uh, beneficiary, but when we add it together, it amounts to something around 3,200 crores for the state annually. So that is a big amount of money that we are spending, but to put it to a better use, we really require a uh, lot of technical handholding, a lot of uh, uh, inputs from the social sectors in design support, in support of uh, low cost solutions, and in more ways in this sector. And another poor food SAGs would be facilitated to achieve increased access to their rights, entitlements, and public services diversified risk and better social indicators of empowerment. NRLM believes in harnessing the innate capabilities of the poor and complements them with capabilities, with capacities in form of information, knowledge, skills, tools, finance and capitalization to participate in the growing economy of the country. 
Here there is an immense scope for the social enterprise sector to come and work with us, especially in uh, upgradation of the skill of the rural youth so that they can be employed in a much better conditions and participate in economic development of the state. Beyond my department, better monitoring uh, what I can think of uh, because uh, I would not be the right person to comment on uh, needs of all the departments but because I have worked in the uh, block levels also and I have seen uh, what are the schemes of the other departments. What I can miss are better monitoring of mid meal scheme by auditing and empowering DRPs and BRPs. They can be alternate way to run the Akanwadi Kendras in which we can we definitely see a role for the social, social enterprises. There can be alternate options for rural medical care like telemedicines and other things. We can make PDS more integral to the rural markets. At present, it is mostly a government supported system that provides certain facilities, but if it is more integrated to the rural markets to the needs of the uh, people it caters to, I think that would be a good idea. Providing alternate energy solutions. These are the regions that come now to my mind. We clearly have a long way to go in terms of building infrastructures and service delivery. For social entrepreneurs who have interesting ideas, here is how the government can help. Access to information on government schemes, providing opportunities to train manpower, involving private partners in planning processes, audit evaluation, etc., and other things, supporting ecosystems such as Sankar Forum Samriddhi Initiative are certainly a huge boost for establishing a base for the development of social enterprises. We would, uh, I would also like to uh, point uh, out that, uh, as I said, that, uh, if I can quote Stephen Goldsmith, a Harvard professor, the power of social uh, Mr. Goldsmith says that society is on the threshold of the fourth stage of how it addresses its thorniest problems. In stage one, at the start of the 20th century, caring for the people was largely left to families and charities. In the second stage, marked by the welfare state in Britain and the great society in America, the government took on the job of ending poverty. Private efforts were largely crowded out. In stage 3, the states tried to foster partnership with the private sector through competitive outsourcing, but although this sometimes made a big difference, too often the partnership were too perspective and highly focused on cost cutting. In fourth stage, government will tap the ability of the private sector for profit and non-profit to deliver disruptive transformative, transformative innovations. We think uh, it's not just partnering that we seek here, but uh, we need transformation at both ends. You will transform us in our processes and our ways we approach this problem. And in the, uh, in the process, we will also transform the positions, your approaches to the problem. We will definitely give you the scales at which you can impact to these. But uh, what I would also like that it should not just be partnership, but something beyond that where they can be a sustainable model for the social enterprises so that they can even pull all their own as an alternative solution to the needs of the society. I would like to thank Sandhili Forum for giving us a chance to speak at this forum. Thank you and all the best for the summit.